You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And I just have one thing to say to you today. Happy Holidays. You know, that is my prayer and uh, my wish for you. I pray that wherever you are in the world, that you will make a decision to be so grateful for the life that you have experienced this year and take a look at all of the good that's in your life. Be grateful for that and for what's on its way. Wow, do I have a great show for you. We're going to get right to it. My very special guest, James Powers. Yay! He's here today, and he's going to be talking about how to experience your unmanifested answered prayers. Wow, does anybody need to hear that? Or how to receive, behave, act, rehearse, say, and practice your answered prayers. And so I want to give him all of the time that he needs, so we're just going to get right to it. Uh, But before we do, I really want to offer you or remind you again about my special love gift to you. And uh, it is a gift of love. And it is my six month coaching package where I am offering as a gift to my listeners 50% off of the original price of $1,500. So that means you can purchase the package for $750. This is the only time that I'm... Have I ever done this before? I can't remember. I don't think so. But so many of you have been saying, I really want to coach with you. Well, this is your opportunity to work with me one-on-one and connect with me. So here's what you're going to get. Uh, I'm going to send you a coaching session you're going to complete. It's real detailed. You're probably going to cry while you're working on it. Uh, You will get six one-hour sessions, then six 10-minute check-in sessions where I just sort of check in with you to make sure you're doing okay in between the sessions. You're going to receive my book, Complimentary Secrets of Success. I'm going to give you some complimentary MP3 affirmations. You will have customized projects, different exercises I'm going to have you doing, uh, and different readings in between the sessions that will be moving you toward what you want. We're going to uh, eliminate those nasty, yucky, old limiting belief systems so you can get really clear about what you desire And then I'm going to give you a baby step, six-month plan of action. So uh, this expires on December the 31st. If you feel led, uh, you guys know me. If If you feel like you're vibing with me, if you are ready to really invest the time, the effort, and the finances, I'm going to say it's your time. Well, okay, everybody, let's go to these quick commercials. I can't wait to hear uh, what my mentor, James Powers, has to say. We're going to be so blessed. So stay tuned, everybody, and I'm going to be right back with James Powers. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought-after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. An experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at FulfillingYourPurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. 
Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Well, everybody, I'm back and I'm really excited about my guest today. Uh, my very special guest is my mentor of uh, of 25 years, probably 30 by now, James Powers. And it's so interesting when I put on social media that uh, James Powers was going to be my guest for this week. Everybody said, wow, I can't wait. I'm going to be listening. And we're just so blessed to have him. Uh, he's been my mentor. He is a, a principal center person who is an expert in leadership training, church administration, uh, transformational change. And for po 40 years, he's worked with people from different backgrounds, cultures, socioeconomic levels, etc., and uh, has been on the really global stage of life really uh, assisting and planning uh, really large ventures uh, and events. And we're so grateful to have him back. So James Powers, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, thank you very much, Constance. It's always a blessing to be present with you and your audience because I get a real, real blessing hearing you speak to them about how you have lived your life and how you continue to live your life. Well, thanks, thanks for having me again. So let's get going. I mean, it's the end of 2018 and you've been on about four or five times. You were with us at the beginning of the year. And uh, what do you want to talk about today? What are we going to be really helping listeners with today? Well, I thought we live life, but I'm not sure we live a power filled life. And in this power filled life, we're going to be talking about embracing the God or the spirit life that lives inside of us. And when we embrace this spirit life, we were recognizing that we don't do things just out of our minds. We do them from the spirit that's within. And what that hopefully at the end of this, we want you to know how to experience your unmanifested answered prayers. You know, we've talked about living your answered prayers. We're going to say if they haven't happened and have not manifested, we want to talk about maybe they have manifested and we haven't recognized it at the level we should. Well, because, you know, I know a lot of people, uh, James Powers, might be feeling like, wow, it's getting close to the end of 2018. And I thought I would have manifested and so we're going to be answering a lot of those questions. So go ahead and get started. So beginning in 2019, what should people be doing or feeling or thinking? Well, as we do this entering into 2019, we ought to have a clear picture of what it means to embrace the spirit life. And because when we do this, it causes us to receive fully. There's a difference between receiving, I-N-G, and receiving fully, meaning it already exists. So we want to talk about this idea of what happens when we receive something. Mark 11, 24 says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, if you believe that you receive it, almost past tense, then you'll have whatever you say. So when you believe that you receive it, it's what is called the first creation. That means you you do it mentally and receive it there. That's where it lodges. That's a law of human existence. And then the second creation, when it actually physically show up. But what I want us to realize today that once you receive it in your thoughts and proclaim it as already present and you receive it, then Physical manifestation does not equal manifestation because if you see it the way you are believing for it, it already exists. Ooh. So somebody uh, who's listening right now who may have put an intention out there and they feel like that it has not manifested uh, on the physical uh, plane of their lives needs to really be open to what you're going to be talking about today. Absolutely. Because once you decided it's hadn't happened for me, then we're going to talk about how do you go back and see how you formed it 
mentally. You see, if you formed it mentally with a question mark or with doubt, then the full manifestation of it can't come to pass because we are still living out of a maybe rather than an assurance that it already exists. In other words, a good example, if I brought home a 1,000 piece puzzle and gave it to you with no picture on the front of the box, how in the world are you going to be able to put the puzzle together? So we want to take today and say, I'm bringing you the 1,000 piece puzzle with a beauty, pretty picture on the front. And all you have to take your time and put the pieces in place because you already have a clear image of what it looks like. OK, so you had just mentioned about how we need to embrace first and second creation. Explain that. What does that mean for someone who set an intention this year and they feel like that it hasn't manifested? Go back and revisit the prayer that you prayed. And now that may be shocking because you say, I don't remember exactly what it is. Go back and do the best you can. And this time, write your prayer down the way you believed you wrote, you prayed it the first time and see whether the clear clarity of what you are asking your prayer to be is clear enough that you can go ahead and say, if my prayer is answered, I could absolutely see how my life would change in the second creation in reality. So that's what we do. Revisit your prayers. We'll talk about that later on. One of your 2019 things, I'll jump ahead, is you have to make sure that every prayer you pray, there's some record of what you pray. So your emotions and your mind will both be congruent as you move forward in the future. So if somebody this year said, well, I'm going to get a new job and that has not happened for them, go back and revisit that prayer and then align their mental and emotional images with that already answered prayer now. Absolutely. And with the idea of looking at all of the things you have been trying to do, if you know the kind, you can't just say I'm looking for a job. You got to know the kind of job you want. And if it's nothing else, you would say, I'm going to go and visit this, 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 this job is at the hospital. I want to go and see what it's like to do this job and meet somebody who does that job. And all of a sudden you stir in your emotion. But if you want a job and you have no clue as to what that job is like and where it is and what it looks like and who has that job, there's a good possibility that you're going to have a skewed mental image of what you're trying to to see come to pass. You're right. So, so what else, what are, what, what are some more principles that listeners can begin to do to experience their unmanifested answered prayers? Well, first of all, I want you to realize that you have to have faith in your prayers. Hmm. Faith in your prayers mean that here's what it means. It means that you, faith shows you the reality of what you desire before it actually happens. So one of the principles is know what you desire, believe it, and receive it. That's the fundamental one. Know that you have to default to your spirit life more than you do your reasoning life because your prayers emanate from the spirit within and cause you to begin to pray the prayers you want to be from the spirit that's within. People are trying to pray sometimes only out of their head and not out of the spirit that guides them. And and so, you know, sometimes when we pray, uh, Mm -hmm. I I know with me, just everything we see on the outside is just so different than what (laughs) we've prayed. So when you say when you pray, (laughs) believe you receive, your belief has to be more powerful than what you see with your five senses. Exactly. You have to know what you want and see that clearly before you pray it. Okay. You can't, what I call some people, some people stumble into a prayer and just start saying things. Uh-huh. But sometimes it may take you a week to completely form a prayer based on the way you want to pray it. It's not just jumping in the corner. You're going to say, I have to form an idea, spirit, of showing me what I, this is my desire. Help me to form this desire and merge it into a prayer so I can believe that when I pray it, I believe that I receive it. Remember, it said a desire, a desire, a desire has emotions built into it. Yeah. 
So if we have those desires, we may be, see, I want to make sure I make this point. Sometimes when you stop to pray and pray in a hurry and think that prayer is fully engaged, you may have to think about it, muse about it, <coughs> excuse me, see mm-hmm. the outcome of it. And when that happens, you then will find a moment where the spirit is beginning to pray through you and give you the prayer to pray. And then you should write it down the way you do it. And sometimes when we write a prayer down and read it each day, you find yourself adjusting it to the new insight you get about what you were praying. Yeah. So listeners are embracing uh, the spirit of God, the spirit life, but we're also uh, using our mental and emotional senses to say, this is true. I already have this now and I'm living every moment of this answer prayer right now in the first creation. And I don't even have to see the second creation in my physical world for a while because I know it's there waiting for me. Exactly. And that's why the scripture says whatsoever things you desire. Notice what it said out there. When you pray, the desire precedes the prayer mm. and desire are built with multiple emotion because you're going to get excited about it. You're going to see it. The only the greatest example would be if someone said, you know, I need a car. What kind of car you need? How do I just don't know. And then you go into the dealership and you know what? the first thing they're going to do and let you sit in it, mm. find the one you like. And then what they're going to do, they're going to do a road test. And it's going to increase your sensitivity to it. this feels like the car I want and your emotions get involved. And now every time it start reinforcing it, you see that car on the road over and over again. And it's reinforcing the desire that you have. And then maybe after that, you begin to pray. I now desire this. Absolutely. Yeah. And so a lot of people I know I did for a while. You know, you just have things written down on paper, but you really had to have a image and a feel for that prayer already being answered. Absolutely. In fact, one of the things I remember most, and I was going to say this later, mm-hmm. audience, what Constance Arnold has always done when we would have meetings at her home with leadership and with women's group. And we went there and I took our leaders there one time, about 25 or 30 people. Mm-hmm. And as we walked into Constance's home, Every wall in every room, if people were like they were taking a tour in a museum because everything she desired was on the wall in specific pictures and paintings. And people were all that. Oh, so every time you walk through your house, you're walking through your first creation. Yeah. And had pictures of it that was so clear that you could see that the second creation had to be true already. Yeah, and it was so interesting because I didn't know then what I know now, but I would go in each room. Like you said, I had I had a big, pretty big house and I had pictures in every room and I would maybe sit in my living room by the fireplace and whatever pictures were in there, I would say, OK, this is mine. And just feel it and know it. And and the interesting thing was everybody who came into my house, you know, I used to have a lot of functions there. They would say, oh, OK, I can see you having this. So their faith really came into alignment and agreement with all of those images on my walls. Absolutely. And one of the principles I was going to share here, you have to make a decision about what kind of life you want to live. And some people will come in and say, you know, I had uh, uh, some things I want to do. But when I saw these things on Constance Wong, she was given indication of how she wanted to live. And she had certain patterns of behavior that was consistent with the way she wanted to live. And those things, the home we were talking about, she was telling me once before, even before she bought the home, it had a hammock in the front. She asked the lady, could she come out even before she bought the house and just lie in the hammock and just take it easy for an hour or so, because that's how powerful it was in her mind to see what it feels like to have that house even before she got it. Yeah. And that's, that's exhibit a of creating in that first creation. I had prayed for it, but I had to really put my imagination, my emotions and, and the mental part of my being into living 
every moment that I have it now. That's first creation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and first creation is so powerful if you keep it. It's like we we're going to bring this up in, in Georgia. We have a lot of poultry farms, but most people who live in the rural area had their own uh, animals, chickens and things like that. And that chicken would go and lay 10, 15, 20 eggs. And the owner of the home would go and get those that they want to cook and the hen would come and sit on them. And it takes 21 days for an egg to hatch. That chicken would sit there all day and she would get off the nest to go eat herself. And something that God had built inside of the chicken knew that there was a moment her body temperature began to change. She would be driven back to the, the, the eggs so she could sit on them so they would not lose their warmth. So some of us need to take a decision. And on the things we are believing for, we got to know how to sit on our eggs and not leave the post. And she did it three or four times a day. So I want you to walk away from the day and say that which I desire on my eggs. And I don't care how many chickens you see on the 21st day. The chick begins to pack from the inside out. So you don't have to make your vision come to pass. The law built inside of the chick and built inside of the hen work together so that the hen doesn't have to pick the chicken out of the shell. The chick picks from the inside out. So take that as a metaphor for you to say, I need to take my time, sit on my dreams and keep them the way they want to do. And the law built into that first creation would bring about that manifestation the same way the egg sitting on the egg long enough for the chick to come forth. It's a law built into it. And if we can understand that law, you won't have to worry about the manifestation. You just worry about sitting on your eggs with your emotions, your thoughts, and your repetition and your proclamations. Wow. Nothing else I can add to that. That's powerful. And, and that, that's something that listeners can, can really go back to. So should listeners be like going back to thinking about how they have been living this year or, or what should that look like? That's one of the first thing I'm doing now. I said to conscience, the reason I'm agreeing to do it this particular program again, because sometimes I get to the point where I am doing something and didn't know that a little bit of doubt had created come into me and start acting like a habit. So, yeah, I have to go back and ask you, what were you living like in 2018? Mm-hmm. How, how have you been living? What are some of the patterns you have? Have you inspected to see whether you kind of gotten in a position where you were thinking, well, I don't know. The moment you know that you restate who you are and make some decisions about the patterns you have and the habits you have and change those habits by a new way of thinking about what your first man your first mental creation was about. And so for, for listeners who set forth an intention, I think that's just a powerful thing that, uh, that you can do. And, you know, just look at your life every day. I look at my life to see, was I happy? Was I joyful? Was I, you know, how was that feeling? And, and all of those are emotions. And we already know really your emotions really are just an indicator of what you truly believe. And, and so I think that listeners taking a look and saying, oh, I didn't sit on my dream long enough. Or, oh, I, I see here that 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 mentally uh, that I didn't really have a clear picture of it. I think that's powerful. And I want to tell you something that's important. Okay. Going back to the chick analogy for this listeners. If for some reason the chick, the, the hen left the nest and it was the 15th day and she got run over by the car. No other hen would go in there to do that. So those 20 eggs are lost because they lost the comfort and the power that was built into the original one sitting on it. So sometimes we walk away. We don't get run over in the street, but we get disturbed and we get depressed and we get uh, uh, feeling negative about things. And it's the equivalent of you walking away from the eggs that you were sitting on to go somewhere else and not do what you know you need to do. They will not hatch. 
because you want them to hatch unless you're sitting on them and reminding yourself how to make it happen. You know, I've just used me for an example. <laughs> um, you know, all of you know, I was on the air with James Powers and, and um, one of my intentions or desires is marriage. And uh, this year, uh, I could have at this very moment been in a what some people would have thought would be a powerful relationship, but I just knew in my spirit, no, it looks good, but, but that it really wasn't a match for me. So the question is, you know, what have I been doing and feeling? Uh, what have my patterns been? Have I been joyful? Have I been sad, uh, et cetera. And so how have I, uh, stayed on my dream or kept or kept my eggs warm and and I have not been perfect and I'm not looking for perfection it's a process but I have really been living in that first creation in my mind I see myself married I when I go to Whole Foods I think about huh, this is the kind of food that we're going to be eating when I'm walking in my neighborhood I see myself walking and running with my husband when I'm at the gym lifting uh, weights. I see him behind me saying, come on, baby, give me one more. Give me one more. And uh, just the other day, James Powers, I was in the store and I was looking for my brother's Christmas gift because he told me what he wanted. He said, I want a hat and a scarf. So I asked the lady, where is the men's department? <laughs> because usually I just go in and I'm just in the women's department and I went over there and I start looking for my brother and then when I was over there I I just start touching some of the fabric I'm like huh so this is a hoodie my husband would probably love this and just in my mind I was living in first creation and then I saw the cologne and I went over there and start smelling the cologne and, and all of that. And it was like I was in my own world, which I was for like 20 or 30 minutes. And those are just some of the things that I have done during 2018 to really stay um, centered on my dream. And have there been moments in my life? Of course. Have there been moments when I felt like, oh, my God, when is this going to happen? Of course. But I can truly say that I have been living and embracing first creation, even though on the on the physical plane, the manifestation hasn't come. That's an excellent example. She what was saying it was a way of saying not doubt fully grown. Mm -hmm. But it's just a question mark. And when you have any type of simple, unstated unbelief or doubt, what it does, it hinders the manifestation of your dreams that has not manifested yet. But it doesn't destroy it. It hinders it. And that's why I want to say to you, as you come to the end of the year, it's time for you to clear your mind. Mm -hmm. Clear your mind for the rest of your journey. Remember, this is a journey, not just an event. And you go back and regroup. And I'm asking you to one of the principles is, is revisit the prayers you prayed and the expectations you have for the manifestation of your prayers coming to pass. If you can't do that before the end of the year, make a list of those prayers, you'll go into 2019 wanting to pray new prayers when the old prayers were not wrong. They just were forgotten. You got off of the eggs and went to something new. So should people actually write down their prayers after they pray them? Well, when you go to the grocery store and you have 20 or 30 things to buy for the Christmas uh, Thanksgiving dinner, no, just go there and come back home with 20 boxes of uh, cereal and then see whether you can feed the people. Absolutely, they should be written down. Okay. And they ought to be written down. You ought to go with a grocery list based on what meals you actually plan to cook. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at your prayers again and see what, what, what you expected the outcome to be from the desires you prayed for. What does that look like again? 
And if you don't have that written down, do you know what happened? You prayed a good prayer once, but you didn't come back to the eggs. Oh, yeah, that's so true. And so they're going to write it down. And then I I think when when it's written down, at least my prayers, I'm going to start doing that because I don't have some of my prayers written down. It, it, It will help me to really practice and live in the now emotionally, mentally, and in my imagination that that prayer is already answered. Constance, one of the best things people could have to keep from wandering and uh, being negative in their thinking is to have their, what they call, for the lack of a word, your prayer book. And go back and look at that. Do you Can you imagine how powerful it is, like you mm-hmm. just said, how emotional and how spiritual you will feel when you go back there? That's why they tell you if you have something that comes to you and you don't write it down immediately. You may get back home and try to remember, but the power that was associated with the first time it came to you, the essence of it leaves when you choose not to write it down. So true. And and so really, people are just getting clear in their minds just what the rest of their life or their journey is going to be when they do all of these things that we talked about. And particularly in relationship with your prayer, if you had eight or 10 prayers Mm -hmm. that you prayed. And you were expecting the outcome and you haven't visited that prayer again to see what that outcome would be. But now here's the big piece. Once you look at the outcome, we'll talk about this a little later. You ought to ask, what is my life going to look like when that prayer is actually fully manifested? And that's where your emotions get excited. If you can't see clearly how you're going to be feeling emotionally, spiritually and stopping worrying, you have not really had a good look at the nature of the prayer you prayed. Because so I can say a lot of words, but what is behind a powerful prayer or the actual idea of what things would look like with my life change. I've often said to you and other people, when they ask what I pray for them, I said, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. And they look at me and they say, I thought that's what you do. I don't want to pray for you until I find out what you want me to pray for. And secondly, what would your life look like if the prayer was answered? Yeah. And for most people, people look at me like a deer in the headlights and think, what do you mean? Why pray for something when you don't know the outcome, the desired outcome you want for that prayer? So Is that not simple? So beginning in 2019, what should listeners do? What are some principles you can share with us that we can begin to do? Well, first of all, when you deal with principles, you're talking about living your life around your roles and your goals, Mm -hmm. whatever roles you have. I want you to make sure that principles are fundamental ideas that has built in them the possibility of that coming to pass. A principle is not something you can break a principle. A principle will break you. So right now, I want you to begin to do this. To prepare in 2019 for what you think could be the great changes in your life. What would it look like in June of 2019 when you look back for six months and say, oh, my goodness. Look what is happening. It, it's happening. I see the evidence of it. that's one thing. You've got to see the outcome. Uh, Stephen Covey said once more, one of the principles of the seven habits says what? Begin with the end in mind. And work backwards. So you want to say what? I want to prepare for the great change that could happen and will happen in my life and start acting like what you are praying for and believing for is going to happen, and what would you do different with your life monthly and daily until it come to pass? That's one principle. Mm. Then next, you know this one, live life not accidentally, but choose to live it intentionally and on purpose. And an intention is simply an aim or an outcome you want. 
So when you're living life intentionally rather than accidentally, you get up this morning and this happens. Say, oh, just another day like this. When you get up in the morning and you are intentionally looking forward to that day, having something to do with the outcome you want for 2019, you then are being very intentional. That's another principle. So it would be like if someone wants to have get pregnant and have a child and if they believe that their prayer has been answered, they would really begin watching what they're eating, maybe going shopping for baby things. Everything would be around that child coming into their lives. So their day to day activities and behaviors would really be centered on that because they're living from the outcome. Excellent. Excellent. You have to be able. I have a personal thing. It happened to be a, a family member. I happen to be a female. Mm-hmm. The first thing I got her at 16 was a wedding planner. Got a one at 21, whatever it was, and start looking at all the things. And then when she got married. But even before then, she knew what a, what her uh, baby place is going to be the little the room to, the, for the baby. So. In her mind, she had already accepted the wedding day, accepting the having the child, accepting the baby room is something else it's called, but I forgot it. The, 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 the nursery. The, the nursery. The nursery. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a baby room to me. But <laughs> to see, well, I hope she won't listen to this. But, that, <laughs> but the idea is when you have an image of an outcome, it drives you the same way that it's driving the chick inside of the egg to grow feathers. It starts off as a microscopic entity inside of the egg. The only difference between the egg that we eat for breakfast and the egg that uh, was in the nest is that it's been fertilized between the, the, the male and the female. The one we eat for breakfast, we can keep it under our hand. That's what a lot of people are doing. They put in store-bought eggs under the chin and they have not been fertilized. Yeah. You got to mentally see and believe with your heart. That's the fertilization process that what you're putting in your prayer has the possibility of outcome. That's why what you just said is so true. You have to see the outcome, the end product, mm-hmm. and that drives you to the to the uh, to the uh, end that you want. OK, what else can listeners do? The other one what I want you to do is to review your prayers. I have to come back to that. Yeah. You have to review your prayers in detail. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing it again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it in a brand new diary and just redo all of them. Write them over. Sometimes rewriting your prayers forces you to see something. It's like from sometime when I read the word or the scriptures. I've read it a hundred times, but for this particular time and circumstances, I'll read it. And all the other times I've read it, I never saw that before. Yeah. And And when when you (laughs) rewrite your prayers, you know, you can kind of see, okay, I thought I believed that, but I really didn't. Oh, I thought I was asking for something at this level. I could have asked for it with this dimension to it because I could show back then I didn't have as much faith to ask for this as I thought I did. Now it's clear I can make the vision greater than what I saw before. And that is the beautiful part. Yeah. So you want to review them in detail. And if you list them, you got to list them. And if not, you begin to list them now. Mm -hmm. That's number. That's one of the things. Review. Look at the details of your answered prayer. Hmm. That's another thing. Whatever your prayer, whatever your prayer looked like, if it was answered, start looking at the details of it. So what do you mean by that? So that means that um, if somebody uh, really wanted a new job, a new career, they're going to look at the details. What would that look like? Where would my new office be? Would I have a window office? How long would the commute be? Is that what you mean? Yes. And I'm going to do one that I'm sure can touch someone. Okay. Okay. What about your financial? I'm trying to get I'm, I'm, I'm in this financial situation and I need more money and I'm asking for all the money I need to take care of all of the expenses I have to pay off some things or well, details is to get a piece of paper or get an old checkbook from a check company you haven't and take that checkbook out and start writing the checks to everybody you have outstanding bills for 
and be in details. What is the payoff for my house? What is the payoff for this 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 credit card? And write a check to that. Because when you force yourself to see how long it will take you to pay it off if you keep paying it the way you are, but you write a check for it. That's the detail. You're looking it up. You're taking everything that you owe and the things that you desire, write a check for them and begin to see that. That's detailed. Some people say, I just need to get out of debt. What does that mean? I just pay everybody off. What does that mean? Get mm-hmm. detailed about that. And that's that's one of the things. So people need to be intentional. Absolutely. And this is what I want. This is my intent for 2019. and need to be kind of like living in that intention. And I want you to do this about that 2019. I'm asking you to do something between now and the next few days to the the end of of December. Mm -hmm. I want you to address some dress and do some important new things by the end of December. It may be write down some things you hadn't written down before, but make a list of some important and new things that you want to enter into 2019 to make your life intentional around those things. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a friend that's just an easy example. You know, Lucy Sharp. Right. She said, and she's an African American woman. She said, "I want to ex in 2018. I want to expand my relationships with different cultures." And so she adopted this uh, international student, I think, who's from Asia. And then she worked on a political campaign and adopted another person from Africa. And so at the end of the year, I had lunch with her and she was saying how because she was intentional. This is just a great example. Now she has, I think, about five different people from cultures uh, that she is really close with and, and they're real friends. So that's an example of setting an intention for 2019 and just sort of staying in that state of mind. Make the, uh, your outcomes for 2019, make them opportunities and plans and activity for you to work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, w- I want to ask you to do this this question. Can you see or do you know the clear outcomes of your prayers? If there's not clear clarity about the outcome of your answered prayer, you may have prayed the word, but the outcome is not clear. So you need to revisit that and get clarity on what your life would look like once your prayer is answered. Once that happened to you, you set in motion a spiritual law that's like gravity. Gravity won't change because you want to change. You can't jump off the house and be Superman or Superwoman. This is what I'm asking you to do. How would your prayers and this is these two things are big. Mm -hmm. Look at the clarity of the outcome and how your life would change. You cannot lose. If If you want to do those two things alone. And accept that you have it. That would be a monumental change for for all of us, including myself. So what would our lives look like? What would it feel like? What would we be doing differently? Who would we be doing it with? So they're delving really deep into detail of what that outcome would look like. And physically, what would it look like if I'm spending a lot of time worrying and I'm and I'm on this blood pressure medicine and it's keep how what if all of a sudden all of the things I'm worried about no longer exist? Go back into your primary care and see whether you can change your life, physical lifestyle, because maybe all the things you were anxious about, they are gone because you now have a different lifestyle. And that lifestyle you're living now doesn't cause your blood pressure to exceed that which is normal. Let me give you an example of that. I have a client. And she wanted to lose, I think, like a lot of weight. I think she she's lost 80 pounds or released. And so a lot of times uh, people who have to release weight, they like, oh, it seems so big. But we ha- I had her to start with, with the outcome. What would you be doing? She said, I would be playing with my children. I would be able to wear a, a swimsuit when, when I go on vacation with my husband. I would be able to walk up steps. So we begin to just imagine what would her life look like with that weight release. And that was the motivation that kept her 
uh, eating right and desiring to exercise. And she lived in, like you said, what her life would look like even before she made changes with her eating and exercise. But because she lived in the outcome, it motivated her to uh, start that new behavior. Wow. I'm going to ask all of you to do something. And this will be an example for you to show Constance what you're doing. I'd like you to write Constance an email. Okay. Detailing to her the outcome of your life or what your life would look like and the way your life would change if your prayers got answered. Yeah. And that's Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Wow. I can't wait to read it. And the fact that you would send it. I had someone from uh, that was on the program and wrote me from a constant show and I had her doing some purpose driven things. And she said, I thought she'd forgotten about it. She just hadn't responded. And that was almost nine months ago. And over two weeks ago, she said, you know what? I'm back to what I was wanting to finish, but I was so caught up in other things. I couldn't finish it. I want to go forward. And I felt so great about a person returning to something without saying, I feel embarrassed because I hadn't done it. She said, I'm back in the game. I'm ready to have my purpose driven life move in the direction we were going. Send that to Constance. And once you do that, you are putting it down on a piece of paper and seeing what you are saying to her as a result of what you're doing. I want to say something to some people. One of the changes you ought to make. Sometimes if you're calling people and they're constantly telling you what can't happen, Mm -hmm. maybe you ought to not call that person as often to make you think that what you're doing is not the right thing to do. I'm not asking you to get rid of your friend, but sometimes a situation or a person interacting with you have gotten used to the habit of hearing what's wrong and responding to you in a way that makes I don't know whether that's the right thing to do, child. I, I, maybe you want to just wait until you are physically able to stand in your prayer and then talk to that person. The other side of that is call someone and encourage them about a relationship that they may want to change. I know you could do this. Yeah. I know you want to rebuild this relationship with your child. Here's what I'm thinking that, that would be fine. You don't have to do this, but I can just see you rebuilding that relationship. I'm not telling you to go back to an abusive husband or something, but I'm just using powerful principle that change the way you think. Because the way you think is a habit and without you doing it, you default to what you the way you think most often. Yeah, that's a scary proposition. Well, we just got about 10 minutes. Wow. So so you've given us so much James Powers, but but how should we be and act after we prayed? All right. I'm glad you asked. There's a process to everything. OK, here's some of the things that you ought to do. See, is sometimes people think everything is an event. Driving to California for me is a process because I want to stop to all of the little places. So here's one of the process. Make sure you look at your behavior Mm. and begin to behave in the direction of the way your prayers will be answered. Wow. Mm. So you said, I'm not going to let my old behavior, which is leading me away from my answered prayer. So behave. The way my grandma was, behave the way in church the way I want you to behave. Well, I don't know. Well, once I got home the, the day and she took care of it, I knew <laughs> what she meant. Yeah. Next one is act, not just behave. Act in that direction. But you have to have a clear view of what your answered prayer is so that when you wake up in the morning, your action is consistent with the outcome. And when you go to plays or drama, do you realize when the basketball team or the football team, they go out and they rehearse? I want you to think about what would it be like if you start rehearsing what your prayers are and rehearsing those prayers exactly the way you want the prayer outcome to be. So when I used to practice for plays, I didn't practice wrong and hope that I could get on stage and and, and perform right. So. Rehearse in the direction you want to do. Talk to yourself. Oh, that's big. <laughs> yeah. And here's what I learned to do. Before I got on the program with Constance, I got on the phone. I sat downstairs and I talked to myself about what I was hoping the spirit 
life that I'm embracing on this phone will come across with that. So I start talking to myself about my answered prayer. Yes, this is what I'm going to do. The next one I would say, say things in your heart about your answered prayer. Now, you could talk out loud, but you got to mumble and meditate over these things. Because if you don't choose to meditate about the outcome you want, you'll be meditating on something because as Constance will know, the number of 60 something thousand thoughts that come through your mind a day a day mm-hmm. will dominate you without you do the deciding it. So you got to intentionally say things to yourself. Can you and, do and, that? And you know something? Those 60,000 <laughs> thoughts are the same thoughts unless you interrupt them. And, and put something new in there. That's what they're saying. It's the same like we're on automatic, automatic pilot where people are just thinking the same thing. So that's very powerful. And the repetitive nature of it, done often enough, create brain waves and grooves that become habits. And that's like brushing your teeth and everything. You don't have to order the thoughts. They are ready to go at the moment you wake up. Yeah. Wow. Begin living the desired outcome of your answered prayer. When? N-O-W. Do something today about this program that you know you need to do it. If it's only two things, do them now. Don't let now moments be taken up by something that you don't intentionally want to happen in that now moment. Hmm. So so those, those are some of the things that you would want to do. And wow, that that's so that's so helpful for people because I know you're a process person, and 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 for all of you who who feel like that you have uh, this year you have uh, unmanifested answered prayers, you know James Powers has just laid out for you very specifically ways of thinking, doing being, uh, how to deal with your emotional, mental, and imagination that would allow you to to live from the end and really live uh, embracing the God spirit life because you know that in your mind it's already done. Absolutely. I want you to make sure you know before we get off the phone that you can easily mistake begging for something in your prayers and acting with an ins- a sense of intention. Hmm. There are a lot of people are begging for something and there's no law of begging. It's, oh, please, I need this. I need this. You proclaim it with your word. That's the power coming back to embrace the spirit life. Mm-hmm. And I'll quickly say this before. In Mark eleven twenty four, that teaching, the master taught that teaching to make a point when he did this work to this fig tree, he told them that that tree would not have anything else to produce anymore. And when they saw it the next day, he said, look, master, that the tree that you spoke to Mm -hmm. is no longer, it's dried up. And here's what he said, have faith in God. One version says, don't, that's good. That's a good translation. It says, Embrace the God life. The God life, the spirit life said you could say something with your words with certainty and it has the power to bring to pass what you say. So be careful what you say, but don't fail to say something in the direction that you want your life to go. You know, this is this is so powerful. It's 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 so hopeful and I just feel like you just really laid out a, a map or a plan or, you know, I'm big on how to's or a process for people to begin to live uh, that powerful life of having answered prayers that your prayers are already answered. Absolutely. Because God wants us to live a powerful, abundant, and purposeful life. And I I just think one of the things that you shared uh, about, you know, just really creating first mentally, emotionally, and in our imagination and just 
staying with that, sitting on our dreams. I love that. Like the hen sits on her eggs is so powerful. Mm. And I know that uh, some of you may have gotten up off of your dream. And like the woman who uh, wrote back to you in the email, she said, well, I'm back and I'm ready. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in closing, we got a couple of minutes. What do you want to say to people, James Powers? The same question I ask you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and working and having the bless- blessing of interacting with conscious all these years. Here's the question I ask her when she answered. I said, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. She said, what is it? I said, what are the most important things you want to happen in your life? Mm-hmm. What is the most important thing you want to happen in your life? And without batting an eye, she went to four things that she was certain about with details. So I'm asking you to answer this question and maybe add that to your little list. Miss Constance, here are the most important things I want to happen in my life. And when you look at that list, it will show you what you are doing and what you're not doing to bring that to pass. That would be what I would say would be some of the most important because what you're doing, you open up a way of asking a question. What do I want to happen in my life? The important thing. Yeah. Don't be in a rush, but include that in your list that you would send to Miss Conte. And when you write it, you're doing that as an act of faith. You say, well, I don't have time. At that moment, you may be stepping off of your eggs. This this assignment of writing Miss Constant is a way of getting back on your eggs. Yeah. Thank you so much, James Powers. Thank you for the time, effort. Uh, from speaking to us uh, from your spirit. This is a life-changing show. I'm going to listen to it again and again and again and just uh, live these principles every day. So guys, uh, wow, just excited for you about enjoying the holidays and uh, just really have a high expectation for your life and for what's happening, what will happen for you in 2019. And so great for the James Powers once again for being on our show and uh, just enjoy yourself during the holidays and have a great week. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.